Hello, Oak Ridge kids. Vern and Andrea Keller here, and we're going to be your hosts for this morning. So um, it's really weird, isn't it, that we aren't able to meet in person? But um, we're so glad that because of the time that we're in and the technology that we have today, we can still have church and we can learn about God's truth today. And that's what we're going to seek to try to do. You know, God is not surprised by any of this, is he, Vern? No. Nope. No. Nope. He's not surprised by any of this. And today we're going to learn about a woman in the Bible who God used her and her specific gifts and she was fearfully and wonderfully made and in a specific time in history to do something great for God. And, and that's what we're gonna learn and study about this morning. That sounds good. It's gonna be about creativity. That's what we're gonna be featuring this month. It's imagining what you could do because you're made in God's image. What a great truth. So before the lessons though, we would love your family to join us with, with two worship songs. Sophie's gonna lead us on one, and we're all gonna learn a new song together, okay? About God's awesome creation, because that's what we're gonna be learning about, again, all month long. Sophie, take it away. Raise the game. Come on, raise the game. Are you ready? He gives us everything we could ever need to love the world around us to be a light in darkness he's with us every breath he's with us every step so we can leave fear in the dust behind us if you want to raise the game he will give you strength to reach another level in
just wanna, I just wanna, I just wanna I just wanna thank you cause everything you made is so Today and last week, we learned about how God created everything. And one of the most important things that he created was you and me. And no two persons are alike. No two persons' fingerprints are alike. And so right now, in, we're gonna do an activity. We want you to turn off the video, and in your packet this week, you're gonna find a bug jar, a stamp, and some examples. And we want you to use your fingerprints, your own unique fingerprints, and make a creation. Cut them out and put them in that jar. And when you're done, don't forget to post them on Instagram and, and Facebook. We wanna see your creations, your unique creations that are specific only to you. Amen. And just like our fingerprints, God made each one of us unique and different. So we're going to learn a story about Queen Esther, how she was used in a unique way to celebrate God's not only direction and vision, but for his glory as well. So take a listen to this message. You're going to love it. The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story. Inspired by the book of Esther. Esther was the queen of Persia. Wait, what? Queen? Esther didn't become queen in the usual way. See, her father wasn't a king, and she wasn't from a noble family. It's just me and cousin Mordecai. In fact, Esther was Jewish. Many of God's people had been captured and brought to Babylon when their home, Judah, was conquered. Then Babylon was taken over by Persia. So Esther grew up in a land that wasn't her own. When Esther's parents died, her cousin Mordecai raised her as his very own daughter. Always remember what our scriptures say. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. Love him with all your strength. One day, a new king named Xerxes came to power in Persia. He was so impulsive that he actually fired his queen Vashti simply for refusing to show up at a wild party. She will never see me again. When Xerxes had finally calmed down, he had realized he now had no queen. I have no queen. He would have to find a new one. I must find a new one. 
So the king decided to hold a contest. He ordered his officials to gather the most beautiful young women in the land and put them through an entire year of beauty treatments. Esther was one of those girls chosen. Cousin Mordecai, what do I do? Don't tell anyone you're from a Jewish family. I have chosen my new queen. <clears throat> Drum roll. My new queen is Esther. Mm -hmm. Me? Assume the queenly royal crown. I might have to resize it. Just as Xerxes had so impulsively switched queens, he also promoted a royal official named Haman, higher than all of the other nobles in the kingdom. Bow to me, you fools! Haman was delighted when all of the officials outside the palace bowed low before him. When he discovered that Mordecai refused to bow, he was enraged. You have to bow. Uh, somebody make him bow. Haman was so angry. He made a plan to destroy not only Mordecai, but all the Jews in the land. He laid it out for the king. Your Majesty, these Jews live differently than everyone else. They don't obey your laws. Fiddlesticks, that's just wrong. Precisely. Give the order to destroy them. Consider it done. Xerxes agreed to the terrible decree. Messengers took the letter all over the kingdom. Hear ye, hear ye. On the 13th day of the 12th month, all Jews are to be killed. Hear ye, hear ye. When Mordecai and the other Jews discovered the horrible news, they dressed in rough clothing and wept bitterly. Mordecai sent a message to Esther in the palace, telling her what Haman had done. You must ask the king to save our people. Esther was devastated. She sent a response to her cousin. No one can come before the king unless he sends for them. If I do it, I'll die, unless he reaches out his gold scepter to me. Mordecai sent his answer right back. You may not escape, even though you're queen. Who knows? It's possible that you became queen for just a time like this. He's right. Here, tell this to Mordecai. Gather all the Jews. Don't eat anything for three days. I and my servants will fast too. Then I'll go to the king. Esther faced an impossible dilemma, but she took three days to prepare her heart and her mind. Bring my most beautiful royal robes. Heart racing, Esther entered the throne room. Across the long hall, she saw the king seated high on the throne. Breathless, she waited for him to see her. Please, please, please. The king looked up, his dark eyes locked on Esther's face. And then he smiled. He reached out his golden scepter. Thank God. What is it, Queen Esther? I'll give you anything, up to half my kingdom. Esther could have made her request right away, but she knew she would have a better chance if she made the king curious. King Xerxes, if it pleases you, come to a feast I prepared today. Oh, and bring Haman. Consider it done. Esther created an elaborate feast for the king and his number two official. <laughs> Look at me, you peasants, invited to the queen's banquet. At the meal, King Xerxes once again tried to discover what Esther wanted. I'll give you anything up to half my kingdom. Once again, Esther held her ground and waited for the perfect moment. I'd like you and Haman to come to another feast tomorrow. Then I'll answer your question. The king agreed, and Haman spent the whole evening bragging to all of his friends. You guys, the queen thinks I am the bum. <laughs> but the second feast was a different story. As before, Esther prepared an incredible meal. Both Haman and the king were quick to dig in. What do you want me to do for you? I'll give you up to half my kingdom. Esther took a deep breath. Something told her this was the right moment. Your majesty, let me live. Please spare my people. We have been sold to be destroyed. Haman paled and choked on his filet. 
but the king's face flushed red with rage. Who is the man who has dared to do such a thing? Esther turned her gaze on Haman. Haman is the one. In a panic, Haman threw himself at the queen. Totally didn't mean it. Please, please, please let me live. You dare attack the queen? Take him away. That very night, Haman was killed, and the king created a new order that would allow the Jews to be saved. We will celebrate this day with great joy. God had given Esther a surprising position in a foreign nation, and when the time was right, she would use all she had been given to save her people. Wasn't that a great story? I love the story of Esther. You know, Esther was created with special gifts and she was put in a specific time in history to do a very special thing for God and to carry out his plans. And just like Esther, each and every one of you has a special gift that God has equipped and created you. You know, Psalm 139 says that we were created, we were formed in our mother's womb. Read that scripture, look it up. It talks about how God knit us together and he weaved us together in our mother's womb and equipped us with very special gifts. That's exciting. And just like Esther, God has a plan for your life and he's gonna use those very special gifts that he's equipped only you with. Our bottom line in this lesson is that God, God created, created you, you for, a, for purpose. a purpose. And I can't wait to see what he's gonna do. And it goes right along with our verse. So on the bottom of the screen, you're gonna see this verse. Let's say it together. Psalm 145, three, Lord, you are great. You are worthy of praise. No one can completely understand how great you are. Let's do it one more time. Psalm 145, three, Lord, you are great. You are worthy of praise. No one can completely understand how great you are. You know what? I have five kids with Andrea. All of them are uniquely challenged, uniquely different, uniquely blessed. So true. One's a computer operator. One does special ed teaching. One's in sales like me. The other two, one's gonna go into social work and the other one, he doesn't know what he's gonna do, but he's athletic and everything else. I think he's gonna be a coach and a teacher. That's the way it is with you. We want you to discover your purpose. What has God created you for and live it out. So right now, we just wanna pray and we wanna thank God. Would you just fold your hands, and bow your head and just, just say a prayer to God. God, we thank you that you created each and every one of us for a purpose. And we pray, God, that just how the story of Esther shows us, God, that you have a plan for our lives, God. And we ask that you would just help us, Lord, to walk in your will and to do your will and all the plans that you have for us. And we pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. What an amazing story, huh? She's yeah. so courageous. She, she was really born was. for such a time as this. It was just fantastic. And it really kind of goes back to our, our verse again, yep. our memory verse. Yeah. Let's say it together. Psalm, Psalm 145, 145 verse three says, Lord, you are great. You are really worthy of praise. No one can completely understand how great you are. All right, boys and girls, in your bag, you're gonna find a last activity for this week called Hunting Helpers. And you're gonna have strips of paper that are gonna give you descriptions of certain people and um, situations. So for instance, I need someone that can help me teach math. That would be a teacher. I need someone that can help me when I'm sick. That would be a nurse. Remember, today's bottom line is that God created you for a purpose. So have fun with this activity. Maybe make up some new words and, and talk about how each member of your family is gifted uniquely to do a job that's only meant for you to do with your unique creative abilities. We hope you have fun with this. And don't forget, post what you did on Instagram and Facebook. We want to see all the things that you did in this activity this week. All right, to close up today, 
parents inside the crate. You're gonna have a wonderful gift given to you by Oak Bridge Ministry for your kids to spend some time in Wonder Devotions. This is one of the ones that I had, and I wanted to read this to you. It's a great devotion that you can spend some time learning about science, learning about God's great created word, and hear messages like this. This was about camels, perfectly planned and created for the desert. Yes, camels were perfectly planned and created to live in the desert, just as fish were perfectly created to live in the water, birds were perfectly created to fly, and monkeys were perfectly created to swing through the trees. And you, you were perfectly created to be just as you are. Just as a potter shapes the clay into the vessel she wants to make, God made you with a plan and for a purpose to love him and to love others. And he gave you a special talents and abilities so you could live out his purpose for you in a uniquely way to do it. God is the perfect creator and he created you according to his perfect plan. So please look for this, it's coming your way. Next week, we're gonna be learning about how God created you to work with others. So stay tuned and we'll see you next week. Have a great week. See you next week. Bye now. Bye.